Award-winning natural bodybuilder and international executive chef Ramel Griardi shares his best recipes for building strength. Sports performance trainer and nutrition expert Joe Arco coaches us through the nutritional components of those recipes and shares his knowledge working with professional athletes. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day and nothing could be more true. People who wake up to eat a healthy breakfast have more energy throughout the day, healthier, but not only that, studies show they're also a lot leaner. So why would you get up, have a cup of coffee and a bagel is beyond me. Thankfully, Body Fuel's got bodybuilding legend, Chef Romel, to show us how to do that. I like that, bodybuilding legend, Chef Romel. So what we're gonna start off with, Joe, is a nice, healthy frittata. Now, what is a frittata? A frittata is a baked omelet. Okay, so it's a fancy way of saying omelet. Yeah, pretty much, Joe. And being the fancy of the two of us, I can see why you choose that. That's exactly it. Now, what do we have here, too? We're starting off with a nice cornbread, a nice, healthy cornbread. So kind of like a little treat to our frittata. That's exactly it, Joe. Okay. We're gonna switch it up a little bit by making a cornbread that's a little bit different for you. I've seen my grandmother make bread before. It takes her most of the day. Bread's gonna rise, this and that. Seems a little painful, this so I'm kind of nervous. This is not one of those grandmother's baked bread, okay? Okay. This is a very easy, very quick bread making. You know, it's gonna take us 12 minutes, plus a little bit of prep time. That's not too bad. No, that's not bad at all. If you don't have the time for the prep the first thing in the morning, so let's say you gotta really get to work early in the morning, how do you cut down on this? What you can do is, we can actually make the whole bread recipe, Okay. place it into the bowl, and make sure the cling wrap or the plastic wrap is all the way to the bottom, so it doesn't skin on As you. As opposed to just kind of throwing it on the top. Exactly. Place that into your fridge and let it go overnight. Next day, you could actually make your cornbread. Excellent. Now let's talk about making the cornbread. Okay. First of all, our dry ingredients. We have some nice rice flour, brown rice flour. Now brown rice flour is actually gluten free. For those of you who have a gluten intolerance, this is an excellent choice for a bread. Now a lot of people don't realize that gluten is very hard to digest. So gluten is actually a protein that's used, especially in breads and stuff like that, to bind all the ingredients. But the problem is most people don't have the enzymes to break down the gluten. So what happens is our body attacks it and this gluten basically acts like a sandpaper through our intestinal wall, leaving you with that gross feeling in your intestines. Well, I don't want sandpaper in my intestine. I don't know about you. Neither do I. Now, if you are gluten intolerant, this is a great way to have some bread first thing in the morning without those issues. Well, now I'm adding some organic cornmeal. So we have our cornmeal, we have our rice flour. Yes, a little bit of baking powder. Okay and a touch of salt. Now you like to use a lot of, not a lot of salt, but you like to use salt in a lot of your dishes. Why is that? Well, you know, you have to bring out the flavors of that, of that dish, including even if you're making bread or any kind of dessert, you'll, you'll see in a lot of the recipes, add a pinch of salt. That salt will actually bring out a lot of the flavors on that dessert. Now we're gonna start adding our wet ingredients. One is we have melted organic butter. Okay. And what do we have in here? We have some soy milk. Now, for those of you who are lactose intolerant or choose not to drink milk, soy is a nice alternative. It's a complete protein, low in fat, easy to digest. Now, from a chef perspective, could we also use almond milk, goat milk, or rice milk? You know, whichever one you want, uh, there's going to be a little bit of flavoring difference, but obviously anything you want, you can use. So if you are a type of person who would prefer to drink almond milk or rice milk or goat's milk, feel free to substitute the soy milk for one of those sources as well. Now, Joe, I also added one egg. Okay. And we're just going to whisk this slightly. So now what's, uh, we have our dry ingredients here, we have the wet ingredients here. Why do you keep those separate while you're whisking them? Because you want a little bit of leavening in that bread. Okay. And uh, with having the dry and wet separate, you have a little bit more leavening. Gotcha. So we're whisking in that together. Now if you can, Joe, can you start adding that sure. slowly into So we're throwing this in just nice and slow. Beautiful, Joe. Now you don't want to just throw this all in at once. No, you want it to bind together slowly. So that way it all comes together. Look at that. Can you see that, Joe? It's starting to thicken up really nice. Exactly. Now, if you were to place this on the side, like I said, mm -hmm. into the fridge for a little while, that's no problem. It'll actually leaven a little bit more. It'll actually give a little bit more body into that uh, bread itself. Now, I notice we have some corn there as well. Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, I just want a little bit more texture, a little bit more difference. You could have uh, canned corn or frozen corn. If you have it and it's available, fresh, That'd be nice. you know, peaches and cream corn, amazing. Now, if you're gonna make this the night before, would you still put the corn in or wait for the morning? Oh, no. Doesn't matter? Doesn't matter. Okay. So I would just wanna stir that in there. And look at that, Joe, it's already done. Now, this doesn't look like a normal 
I guess, bread dough or consistency. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Okay. I wanted something a little bit more lighter, a little bit more flavorful, and a little bit better for you. Now, you preheated the oven. Yes, I did. That's at what? 450. Okay, so we got a preheated oven right now, 450 degrees. We have our batter, if you want to call it that, already. How long is that going to take in the oven? 12 minutes, like I said, Joe. Now, 12 minutes. You wake up in the morning, you got 12 minutes, throw this in the oven. We'll be done this in the next 12 minutes, that's for sure. Oh, exactly. So not a lot of time. By the time it takes you to wait in line to get a coffee and a bagel, you can have a complete meal. You know, for those of you who are trying to get lean, trying to stay on a program, you know, trying to eat really healthy, this is a great alternative to curb those cravings and not feel guilty about what you're eating first thing in the morning. Even myself, Joe, as an athlete, and I love to train and I love to eat as well too. Remember, I'm a chef, right? <laughs> I have those cravings as well too, and sometimes I need to fill those cravings with a little bit of carbs, and this is actually a good carb for you. For a lot of the athletes that I work with too, I also call, you know, I, I talk about minimizing damage. So how do you still live your life, stay lean, perform, but also not go absolutely nuts trying to adhere by a strict diet all the time? This is a great way to get a great breakfast in, have a little pinch of that, that craving, but not feel bad about it at all. So now we're going to start off with heating up our pan, nice okay. and hot. So we got a nice high heat here? Yes, we do. Excellent. And we're going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, Joe. Now some people are concerned with cooking with olive oil in terms of destroying some of the healthy benefits. Well, Joe, yeah, that's true. If I was deep frying with that olive oil, of course, that would be a problem right there. But we're not deep frying, we're actually just searing. Or if you want to stir fry, the same thing too, no problem so at all. So we keep the benefits of all that fat. Exactly. Excellent. So and what are we going to be sauteing here? We're going to start sauteing some nice onions. Nice. Some mushrooms. Now I noticed here we have some asparagus. A lot of people don't realize that asparagus is one of the most alkalizing foods for the body. Not only that, but it's a very good source of calcium and magnesium. Calcium and magnesium have to be absorbed at a two to one ratio, meaning two parts calcium to one part magnesium for optimal absorbability. Asparagus has that in it already. Most of my diets, when I'm pre-contest, I do about maybe uh, three days of uh, chicken asparagus, six times a day, Joe. So six times a day you're eating chicken and asparagus. <laughs> That's all I'm eating. How often would you do that? Uh, six times a day for maybe three days. Now, how many times a year would you be doing that? Maybe three times a year. Okay, so I mean, to look this Depending good, you have to eat like that all the time. Exactly. Okay, now, I also noticed here that we have some red peppers in here. Now, a lot of people don't realize that red peppers, including green peppers and yellow peppers, are extremely thermogenic, meaning that it increases the body's internal temperature. Wow. What that means as well is you're actually burning calories while you're eating this food. That's amazing, Joe. So red peppers that we have in here will actually increase the internal body temperature for about 20 to 30 minutes after eating this. 20 or 30 minutes, yeah, that's so you're wild. burning calories while eating. Now we're also going to take our eggs. Okay. Our eggs, we have egg whites. So how many egg whites do we have in here? We have four egg whites. Now by replacing four egg whites, instead of having four whole eggs, you're actually saving 14 grams of fat. And we're going to have three whole eggs. Now a lot of people too don't realize that eating the whole egg is not that bad for you. In, in fact, most of the nutrients are found inside the yolk of the egg. The issue comes in terms of especially the, the whole cholesterol issue is that people combining the high cholesterol foods with the trans fats, the processed foods, and a general unhealthy diet give you the cholesterol issues in terms of the cholesterol binding to the arteries. That's what they say, Joe. That's what they say. Okay, so we have this stir frying here. Yeah. How long do you want to stir this up for? We're just getting all the flavors out and okay. placing it into our olive oil. So this is starting to brown now. Exactly. We got this whisked away. We're whisking all the eggs and the egg whites together. Okay. And all we're gonna do is place that inside the frittata. Nice. Now this is a little bit different than making an omelet, right? Exactly. So, so are we gonna be flipping this or folding this at all? We're not gonna flip or fold. Okay. We're gonna actually just a little bit of stirring. Gotcha, so we'll get everything moved yeah. around here. Move around a little bit, so that way we know where everything is. Nice. And why don't you get a little bit of that goat cheese and just break it up and put it inside there, How Joe? much this do you want? About half. Okay, so let's take half of this. We're gonna break this up. Now, goat cheese is a, is a phenomenal alternative to regular cow cheese. Now, why is that, one, Joe? Well, actually, one ounce of goat cheese has about five grams of protein in it. Amazing. So for those people who have lactose intolerances, goat's milk is a great alternative to that. So we have about half of this broken up in here. So we have a nice protein-rich, 
vegetable rich frittata ready to go into the oven. Beautiful Joe, look at that. Look how it's just, everything is all spread apart there. Everything looks really nice, beautiful color. We're gonna place it into our oven. Do we have to get a pan for that? No we don't, because it's Quizinox, whole, exactly. Whole, whole thing's going in there. Exactly Joe. Is that normal? Uh, not for most pans, but for a Cuisinox pan, no problem at all, Joe. So how long is that going to be in the oven for? Roughly five or ten minutes, Joe. Okay, so we've got five or ten minutes. We're going to tidy up here, and when we come back, we're going to show you that beautiful frittata. Right, look at that. Now, you know what? I've had... A I mean, I can't even tell you how many omelets I've had over the years and how many countries I've had omelets in. But this looks absolutely fantastic. It smells great. The goat cheese has melted so nicely, evenly. And then a little bonus, a nice little treat. You have definitely gone out of your way once again. So we're going to start to plate this, Joe. Okay. We're going to take a frittata. We're going to take our plate, place this on top of our frittata. Wow, look at that. It's almost like a nice, healthy pizza. Almost. That's what it looks like to me. And we're gonna place a little bit of our... We've got some garnish nice, here. Nice strawberries. Excellent. A little bit of uh, fresh herbs. Look at that now, Joe. Now that looks... Amazing. Perfect way to start the day. Now let's recap some of the stuff that we have here. Now within our actual frittata, um, how many eggs did you put in here? I put seven eggs all together. Okay, so three of them were whole eggs, four of them were egg whites. That gives us roughly about 35 grams of protein. Uh, what else do we have in there for protein? Protein, we have some uh, goat cheese. Good goat cheese as well. We probably put in about two or three ounces of that, probably another 15 grams of protein in there. So right away, we're looking at about a 50 grams of protein first thing in the morning. That's like a lot of protein, which your body needs to start off the day. Is it mushrooms have protein as well? Mushrooms too? as well. So we threw some mushrooms in there. What other vegetables did you have in there? We have some red peppers, some asparagus. Asparagus, my, my favorite as well. Definitely good. your favorite. And then the red peppers adding that thermogenic effect. Now again, breakfast, I cannot stress this enough, the most important meal of the day. That's why I always have it, Joe. Exactly. Now, for those who don't eat breakfast, you're basically sabotaging your metabolism. You're dropping your metabolism down and putting your body in starvation mode. Waking up first thing in the morning, getting healthy food and the body's gonna break that starvation, getting the metabolism boost, ready to go, burning calories right away. You know what, Joe? For a workout, I have a nice breakfast. I like to have my high protein meal, with a little bit of carbs from my cornbread, and that's the way I start off my breakfast. And you know what, everyone should be. There's no excuses not to have a healthy breakfast, especially if you're trying to get lean, build muscle, become an athlete, whatever that may be, whatever your goals are, you cannot make excuses to not eat breakfast, especially a healthy one like this. No more excuses, no more waiting in lines for a bagel or a coffee. Body Fuel Chef Ramel here has given us the perfect way to start the day. I hope you enjoy.